Like any good comic-based video game, Spider-Man for PS4 skillfully weaves in numerous Easter eggs and references to the source material. You may have spotted a few during your first playthrough, but we've definitely got you covered for any you missed. I'm Jet Set with a leaderboard, and get ready to web-swing headfirst into hidden Easter eggs and references in Marvel Spider-Man. Comics, cameos, and cutscenes Marvel Spider-Man is chock full of references to other parts of the Marvel Universe. Up first is the classic Stan Lee cameo. Early on in the game, after the mission Don't Touch the Art, Peter is with MJ at Mick's Diner. After hearing some sirens, Peter goes off to save the day, leaving MJ by herself. As she leaves the diner, the cook behind the counter, Stan the Man, remarks that he loves seeing Peter and MJ together again and that they were always his favorite. You always were my favorites. A nice meta reference from the man who started it all. The Sam Raimi movies also get a little nod during one mission in the game where Spider-Man has to stop a runaway subway car. Much like in Spider-Man 2, he stands at the front of the train and webs the walls to his left and right, hanging on to try and slow the train down. But with typical Parker luck, that trick doesn't work in the game. This makes Spidey quip that it totally worked last time, a fun nod to his movie past. The beautiful cinematics of the game are also packed with nods to the comics. The intro cutscene of Peter's apartment has a few nods to the scientists of the Marvel Universe. As we're introduced to the cluttered mess that is Peter's room, we see a ton of sticky notes, well, everywhere. One note states, RR suit fabric ballistic? Call to confirm. That RR is Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four. Another note says, call TS back for job offer, referencing Tony Stark and the potential job he has for Peter. Good to know Peter has some future prospects. Another cinematic reference stars Doc Ock in a certain military group in the Marvel Universe. After Norman shuts down Doc and Peter's work on enhanced cybernetic appendages, citing repeated safety infractions, Doc is desperate for money. Short on cash and strapped for time, Doc makes numerous military contracts. We don't know who until we spot him holding an AIM mug in a later cutscene. AIM, short for Advanced Idea Mechanics, is an infamous Marvel military group housing MODOK as well as other famous Marvel villains. Not your best move, Doc. While most of the game's map is pretty accurate to New York City, you may have spotted this difference. The famous Charging Bull statue on Wall Street was replaced with a majestic and very, very cute rendering of Lockjaw from Inhumans. Insomniac explained that they couldn't use the classic bull design for legal reasons, so they replaced it with this regal pup. Insomniac also has shoutouts to other video games, including some of their own, peppered throughout Manhattan. One of the early side missions in the game has Spider-Man taking down two thieves named Nico and Roman, the two main characters of GTA 4. Insomniac also references another dynamic duo, their very own Ratchet and Clank at Radio City Music Hall. When visiting Radio City, you'll see the headlining act for the night is the Quarks featuring DJ RC. The Quark is a reference to Captain Quark, with DJ RC being Ratchet and Clank, the stars of the hit series which debuted on the PS2 in 2002. Hopefully we can get a full crossover over in the sequel. Clank on Spider-Man's back as they swing through the city is a must. Backtrack for backpacks. Some of the coolest collectibles in the game come in the form of Peter's backpacks. During his younger Spidey years, Peter left these webbed buildings scattered around the city. They're full of mementos from Peter's past and other interesting items from the Spidey mythos. Those items include Peter's first web fluid. Found in a small Oscorp glue container, Peter comments on creating his first prototype web fluid while Harry interned for Oscorp. Locket of Peter's Parents this locket contains pictures of Peter's parents, Richard and Mary Parker. While Peter mentions how they were both secret agents, he still regrets not knowing much about them. Web Arms A shredded remnant of Peter's old web arms allow him to reminisce about his old days of trying to air glide. While they never really worked, they were definitely stylish. Electro Gloves There are many items from Spidey's first run-in with his many villains. One of those is rubber gloves he originally used to take down Electro, later teaching him to insulate his costume for future battles. Spider-Man Article An article from the Daily Bugle blaming Spider-Man for the deaths of cops murdered by Electro was the final straw for Peter. This article led him to quitting the Bugle, no longer able to stand Jonah's lies. Spider Signal Peter's original costume had a Spidey utility belt. Front and center on the belt was his very own spider signal, May's famous wheat cakes. 
At long last, Peter has secured the recipe to Aunt May's wheat cakes. My guess is that only Aunt May can make them just right. Aunt May's wheat cakes always helped Peter recover after a hard day of crime fighting. Daily Bugle Farewell Card Peter received this card on his final day at the Bugle. Notable signatures on the card include Betty Brandt, Robbie Robertson, and none other than Eddie Brock himself. Shard of Mysterio's Helmet A chipped chunk of Mysterio's helmet actually allowed Spidey to craft stronger lenses from the material. It seems Pete loved modifying his own costumes with tech from his villains. Very Mega Man if I do say so myself. Uncle Ben Baseball Ticket A more sentimental memento is the ticket stub from Peter's last baseball game with Uncle Ben before he died. Peter mentions getting it framed to commemorate him. The question that remains unanswered at the end of the backpack quest is, how many Metro cards with like 51 cents on them did Peter find in all of those backpacks? We covered just a few of the 55 backpacks you can grab in the game. Be sure to find them all, because when you do, you'll be rewarded with the homemade suit from Spider-Man Homecoming. You may not have backpacks hidden all over the city, but if you want some surprises in your inbox, sign up for email updates from the leaderboard by going to leaderboard.nyc backslash email. Suit up. Spidey suits are always a prominent feature in his video games, and Insomniac's latest is no different. There are 28 suits currently available, with more to come in the DLC. This is certainly the most eclectic gathering of costumes in a Spider-Man game, ranging from familiar fan favorites like the noir costume to suits that never have been featured in a Spider-Man console video game, like the Fear Itself and Spider-Punk suits. We're gonna take you through Spidey's whole wardrobe, so strap in. Here's a quick breakdown of all the suits you can find in the game and when they originally appeared in the comics and movies. The advanced suit is new for this game. Insomniac said they wanted to try their hand at making an original suit that was designed to look more like athletic gear than anything else. The original suit, or damaged original suit, debuted in Amazing Fantasy No. 15, published in 1962. This is the costume that started it all. Designed by comic book legend Steve Ditko, it remains as iconic as when it debuted in 1962. The 2099 suit first appeared in 1992 in Spider-Man issue 365. The 2099 suit is worn by Miguel O'Hara, the first Latinx character to ever adopt the Spider-Man mantle. This character was also playable in several Spider-Man video games, like Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions and Spider-Man Edge of Time. The white 2099 suit made its debut in 2015 in Spider-Man 2099 Volume 3 Issue 1. This is the most recent version of Miguel's costume, which was actually gifted to him by Peter Parker himself. The wrestler suit debuted in Ultimate Spider-Man No. 3. Before getting his class Spider-Man costume, Peter handmade an amateur wrestling outfit to fight in the ring and earn some cash. This one is modeled after the Ultimate Spider-Man comics by Brian Michael Bennett and Mark Bagley. The Stark suit should look familiar to fans of Spider-Man Homecoming. It's a recreation of the suit worn by Tom Holland in the MCU Spider-Man Homecoming, developed by none other than Tony Stark himself. The homemade suit was lovingly handcrafted by Tom Holland in Civil War, and it also makes an appearance in Spider-Man Homecoming after his Stark suit gets taken from him. Rounding out the list of movie costumes is the Iron Spider outfit. Fans of the Civil War comic will recognize the spider arms that protrude from Peter's back, but this suit is actually actually the one gifted to Peter by Tony at the end of Homecoming. Up next is fan favorite suit, the noir costume. It originally debuted in the 2009 comic Spider-Man Noir. It was in this alternative spider-filled 1920s that Peter chose a much darker look to strike fear into the hearts of criminals everywhere. The Scarlet Spider suit debuted in Web of Spider-Man 118 in 1994. Scarlet Spider is infamously known as Ben Riley, the clone of Peter Parker. While he debuted during the somewhat convoluted clone saga, he eventually became a staple of the Spidey mythos. Many suits in this game were inspired from writer Dan Slott's run on the Amazing Spider-Man comic. The big-time stealth suit made its first appearance in 2010 in Amazing Spider-Man 650. The big-time stealth suit is the first one created by Peter while working at Horizon Labs. Definitely having a Tron-like feel to it, this suit actually allowed Peter to turn invisible. They also let you use this power in the game. After Spidey lost his spider sense, he needed to create a suit to protect him from this new vulnerability. The Spider Armor Mark II is the result. First appearing in The Amazing Spider-Man 656 in 2011, the Mark II armor is actually bulletproof, a power you get to use in the game as well. The next iteration of the Spider Armor came during the comic event Ends of the Earth. 
Enter Spider Armor Mark III, an amazing Spider-Man 682 in 2012. A globe-trotting Spider-Man was tasked with taking down amped-up versions of the Sinister Six, and so he built the suit to specifically combat them. And finally, the Spider Armor came to an end with the Mark IV in Amazing Spider-Man Volume 4, Number 1, in 2015. The Mark IV was built during a time when Peter was the head of his own technology company, Parker Industries. With an abundance of resources at his disposal, the Mark IV was created created until it was prominently destroyed during the Secret Empire comic event. Amazing Spider-Man Volume 3 Number 10 brought us the Spider-Punk suit. In another alternate Marvel Universe, Hobby Brown takes up the mantle as Spider-Man, not Peter Parker. His punk rock influence costume is symbolic of the revolution he leads against President Osborn in his universe. The Last Stand costume debuted in Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2 Number 58, in an alternate reality where an older and more cynical Peter Parker has resorted to killing many of his longtime villains. He had this more practical costume created and wore it as he died during a final confrontation with the police. In order to save a group of New Yorkers, Spider-Man had to travel to the negative zone, where his costume lost its red and blue and gained the black and white negative look. The negative suit debuted in Spider-Man 90 in 1998. This was actually before the creation of Mr. Negative in the comics, and the suit has no connection to him despite his presence in the game. You'll recognize the Secret War suit from well, Secret War No. 1, published in 2004. When Nick Fury gathered a bunch of heroes to invade Latveria and overthrow its new leader, Spider-Man was given his stealthy suit. The Dark Spider suit was created when Deadpool killed Peter Parker, unaware he was actually his pal Spidey. Deadpool successfully pulled Peter out of Mephisto's grasp, and this costume was the result of that journey. It first appeared in Spider-Man slash Deadpool number 8 in 2016. To combat Electro, Spidey crafted the electrically insulated suit and wore it alongside X-Men in the 90s. It made its debut in Amazing Spider-Man number 425 in 1997. While definitely better than the pair of rubber gloves he first used, it hasn't been seen since that first fight. The Fear Itself suit first showed up in Fear Itself number 7 in 2007. The suit was actually created from the same material as Thor's hammer Mjolnir. Debuting during the Fear Itself comic event, it imbued Spidey with the power of a god until Odin had it destroyed. Kind of a recurring theme, it seems. Certainly one of the most unusual Spidey outfits to make an appearance in the game, the Spirit Spider is an alternate version of Peter Parker where he actually died and rose from the grave as a spirit. This was thanks to the Sorcerer Supreme, none other than, well, Bruce Banner, actually. Alternate universes get freaky sometimes. The Spirit Spider made its spooky debut in the Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 38 in 2011. The Velocity Armor makes its debut in this game. Designed by Adi Granov, this armor has the ability to boost Spidey's speed in the game. Another Insomniac-created costume comes our way in the Empire State University costume. Here, Peter is sporting that class college look thanks to his ESU t-shirt. A reminder of fonder, less college debt-filled times. The last suit created for this game is the Anti-Ock Armor. Designed in the game by Peter to combat the mechanical prowess of Doc Ock's arms, this suit makes an appearance late in the game. The vintage Spider-Man suit is the same as the classic suit, but with a very cool cell shading gloss. This is a great costume for photo mode if you want to take classic comic book pictures. This first suit appeared in Amazing Spider-Man number 16. And finally, we have Spidey in his undies. This isn't actually the first time we've seen our hero in his tidy whities Amazing Spider-Man volume 3 number 1 finds Peter having to make underwear out of webbing after losing his suit in a fight. Poor guy can't catch a break. Whew, Spider-Man is quite the fashionista, and with more costumes on the way, we can't wait to see what else Insomniac has planned. Fingers crossed for Spider-Ham? And if you still haven't gotten enough Spider-Man, check out our 107 Facts video on Spider-Man for PS4. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to your friendly neighborhood leaderboard, your home for video game facts.